Good afternoon. Uh, let's pray before we begin. Our God and our Father which art in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for this fire you've brought us. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, and for your mercy. Holy Father, we call upon thee, Lord, to be with us at this moment, that you may be with us from the beginning to the end. For this is my prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. I'm happy to be with you today. Uh, I, will, I didn't know that I will be joining you because I didn't even know that there was a camp meeting. But um, on Friday, I received a call from one of our ministers uh, called Pastor Josephat. He was working with the general conference. But later on, he received the truth and um, he became a one true God. And so he was invited by Brother Elder Birgen, but he was not able to come, and so he requested me to come. My name is Emmanuel Kimboy from Baringo County, and um, I thank the Lord so much for the fire he has brought me. I was raised by Roman Catholic, a Roman Catholic. I remember in the year 2018, I wanted to become a priest. I made the application. I received my letter. And I was to join St. Mo Mary's Molo Seminary. But my mom said that um, I need grandchildren, so you're not going to the seminary, you know. And uh, there was a fight between me and my mom and my dad. My, my dad wanted me to join the university. My mom was, wanted me to marry. On the other hand, I wanted to join the seminary. So there was, we didn't agree. And I, I was like, I want to join the seminary. I'm not going to the university. I'm not getting married. But then um, my mom was so mad. At some point, she took my phone and called one of the priests and told him that, are you married? And he answered, no. Do you have children? No. So you want my son to live like you? And um, he said that he didn't answer the, the question. But later on, called him and said, it seems your mom doesn't want you to join seminary. So what you can do for now, just uh, go to the university. Four years are uh, not a lot. So after campus, you can come back then, you'll join the seminary. I was disappointed. I felt like this priest is not standing on my side. So I decided to go to the university. And um, as a still Roman Catholic, very faithful. And you know, I believed that the only true church was Catholic. In the Catholic Church, we are told that anyone who is not Catholic will never enter into heaven. So it's like all these Protestants and SDS and others are going to hell. But then um, I used to love my Bible and read my Bible, and um, I used to follow Pope Francis so much because he was kind of my favorite preacher, my mentor, spiritual mentor. So at home, I didn't have a smartphone. I had the small ones. You know, and so when I went to campus, my parents bought me a phone, and so in campus there is Wi-Fi and everything. So I used to follow his preaching on YouTube. One day there was this sermon from Pope Francis, and he said that Christ is a sinner. So I was thinking, what is what is he talking about? He was reading from the Gospel of Matthew, where Christ went to the temple when he was twelve years old. He failed to go back with the parent. And the parents, after three days, they, they come back to the temple and they're asking him, son, why are you troubling us? And Jesus said, why? I'm about my father's business. So Pope Francis said, Jesus was a sinner because he broke the fifth commandment. And then my Bible was telling me that he was tempted in all points yet without sin. So I began questioning, what is wrong with this preaching? I continued following him. The next sermon was that, homosexuality is not sin, that these people were created by God to live that way, and they can be allowed to come to church and they will be saved. Yet my Bible tells me that it's an abomination. So I began questioning, and you know, I was not comfortable. 
I went to the priest and I asked him, is homosexuality sin? And he told me, yes, it is a sin. Then I shared the clip, the clip with him. Then he said, don't follow Pope Francis, you know. These people are just human beings. They are prone to, you know, error and so, and so forth. So after that, I said, I want to follow other preachers. I see what they are preaching. Then I read the book of Revelation, chapter 13. I was a Roman Catholic. I didn't understand anything. I read the mark of the beast, the image. And then I said, let me go to YouTube and search whether there's a preacher teaching about the mark of the beast. And I thought it was God leading me. I met um, Pastor Mark Finley. And he was preaching about Matthew 13, I'm sorry, Revelation 13. And he explained that the mark of the beast is keeping off Sunday. Then Sabbath is the seal of God. I prayed and I asked God, so what can I do? I'm not sure whether this is true, but this man is sharing using the Bible. There was this verse I've never forgot from that today. Um, that is Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 and 20. That moreover, I've given them my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and them. So I noticed that the seal of God is the Sabbath. Then I then the, the following Sunday, I decided that I'm not going to church. I stayed in my room, in my room in the hostel. And I'll just like, I'll not go back to the Roman Catholic Church. The next Sabbath, I went to the to SDA, the, the, the churches in our schools. Then um, I was there, I was invited. I was asked, what's your name? I'm Emmanuel. Uh, where do you come from? I'm a Catholic. And I didn't receive that welcome, you know. I expected people to be like, oh, so you are from Catholic? Uh, you know, but they just say welcome. And then... um. I read, the, then I heard of the spirit of prophecy. I began, I was like, I need to learn more because these people are SDS and I was hearing people, they just, you know, sharing verses. Others are reading the Bible, like they are memorizing the Bible. And I was like, I have a lot to do. So what I did, I had my Bible. I began reading the Bible as a storybook. I asked the elder about the SOP, explained to me, and I began reading. Then I came to this statement from the book Review and Herald, um, July 13, 1897, paragraph 5, which says that to receive the mark of the beast it is to come to the same decision as the beast has done and to advocate the same ideas in direct opposition to the word of God. So it was like, so anything from Catholic is in direct opposition to the word of God. Then I came to check our fundamental principles. That was the year 2020, I was in second year. And I noticed that there was a teaching I was so familiar with, the teaching of the Trinity. And I noticed that even our church is teaching the same Trinity. I went to my past. He told me, please, brother, you were converted the other day. Please don't talk about the doctrine of Trinity because you'll go back to heaven. Then I was disappointed. And I said, well, the God who has been leading me will continue leading me. Then the next, the following year, 2021, I, I don't know what happened. I was invited as a guest speaker in one of the camp meetings of SDA. Remember, I've been an SDA for only three years. They're now inviting me as a guest speaker. I told my pastor that this task is too heavy for me. Please allow them to just put me there as an evangelist or something. And he said, no. God's leading, just go. I went to there and um, I was troubled by how my fellow speakers were doing. The first day we were there and um, how things are done was disturbing. You know, they are placing meat on the table. And me, I know that from the spirit of prophecy, SDS, especially leaders or ministers, should not take flesh. Then I asked the pastor, the, the district pastor, why are people taking flesh? He told me, brother, these things are not in heaven. Let's enjoy well on earth. Then um, I didn't take the flesh. Everyone was taking the pastor and the evangelist and everyone. And I said, no. One of them said to me, brother, you are being an extremist, you know. Just relax, take these things. You know, and I said, no. I took my vegetables. The next day, you know, Things continued. 
Then as the guest speaker was requested to press people and tell them to give the thumb offering, offering. Then I said, I came to preach, not trust man. Then the fight began, began between me and uh, my fellow preachers and the district pastor. Then on Wednesday, I was doing my devotion. And then uh, one of the speakers said, there's something wrong with our church. How things are done today, I don't like. Then I asked that person who was, who was taking us through Bible study, what is the problem? He said that our leaders in the general conference, like they are doing things not in a godly way. Then I said, I have those reservations. I know what's going on. But because this is God's church, let's just press on. Perhaps Christ is coming soon and we are going to heaven. And then he told me, what have you seen? What's wrong with our church? I said, I have a problem with the doctrine of Trinity. Then he told me, please, brother, hold on. Just be silent. And the district pastor was seated next to me. I told him the doctrine of the Trinity is erroneous. Then now the pastor stood and said, we invited you knowing that you believe in the Trinity. Now that you don't believe, I think you are the wrong person and you are in the wrong church. Then we began some studies. He's quoting, you know, Genesis 1.26, John 1.1, 1, 1, and I'm familiar. I had read the Bible and SOP such that I could preach without using those things, but I have them in my mind. So it's giving me a verse which does not prove Trinity. For example, um, Genesis 1.26, the part which says, let us make. He was telling me that God the Father was addressing the Son and the Spirit. Then there's a quote from the book, Kali writing, saying, saying that when God said, let us, he was addressing his son. And he was like, okay, we can look for another verse. So we did a discussion. Finally, he made a call to the general, to the conference in our home and said that we have an offshoot within us. So let's do something be before the church is, you know, is divided. Then I came back home and I said to my home pastor, I think I'm in the wrong place. I, I just, um, I'll be forced to leave SDA. And he said, no, let's stay for a while. Then in the year 2021, that was September, after the camp meeting, I went back to school as a fourth year. And um, reaching there, I said, I'm not going back to SDA because the doctrine of the Trinity is the God of Babylon. I prayed and I asked God, please direct me to some people, maybe whom we believe the same truth. And for sure, there were around seven brothers. We didn't know each other, but we began sharing what we believe in those WhatsApp groups. And, you know, you share anything contrary to what the church believes, you are removed from the group. So people are texting me, where are you? Where can we meet? We... Then from there, 2021, we met a separation in school. After school, I came home. There was no church. Then there's this pastor called Pastor Keitan, who was a one true God, but still working in the general conference. So I told him, Pastor, that was 2022 now last year, we are not going to work this way. Because every Sabbath I used to preach in these churches, you know, you're invited to this church, you preach. And I said, I want to preach the truth. So I began preaching one through God in those churches. So I preach after the sermon or at the end of the Sabbath, the elder calls the district pastor, you're sending us someone who's an offshoot. I, next Sabbath, I go to another church. So almost the entire district I had preached there, one true God message. So past, um, after preaching, pastor comes now telling people, you know the preacher who came last week? Please don't, anything he told you, just leave them alone. But there were people who said, no, this man has truth. And so after around six months, I told the pastor that we are not going to work with these people. We need a separation. And then by God's grace, we separated. And we have a, we had members of around 10 members. We began a Sabbath school and um, with a good number of children. Now, Baringo is a place where, which is an impact, you know. Um, in fact, the general conference, um, mainstream church is not well known in Baringo. And so I've been praying that God may help us maybe to be connected to some people who can help us to preach the gospel. We have around four ministers. I'm one of them, um, and then another youth. Then the two lay preachers. They were in GC, 
one of them had the truth. The other one I shared with him, he accepted and he came out. So we, by God's grace, we began this year, August. We did our first mission, OTG mission, and two souls were converted. And then uh, on Sunday, we have another mission for two weeks. And we pray that God is going to help us. He has, we, by God's grace, we managed to buy the PA system and, you know, those kind of stuff. What you don't have is the pamphlets and those, the, the books you have to give those people. Now, um, we are so afraid of getting affiliated to these ministries, you know. I remember one day, Pastor Jesper told me that, why can't we just be part of SDCR? For those who know, I said to him, no, you know, SDCR is not a ministry, it's a church organized and so I fear that what happened to us when we were in the general conference might happen again. I say that, so let's give ourselves time and let's continue just learning from SPCR, Gospel Sounders and these other groups so that when the time, right time comes, we see that these people have the truth, they are preaching the truth, we can be united. So my, my, it's my prayer today that um, perhaps it was God's will I came to this class that Gospel Sounders ministry may come to Baringo, you know. Um, Matthew 9, that 7 says that, and he said unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. There's only one true God church in Baringo. And so I'm like, Baringo is one of the largest counties in Kenya. There's no OTG. And you know, so we invite you to Baringo so that you can come and share the truth. We work together, we preach the gospel, and God will help us. Um, before I end, uh, I have a burden. And I want to share something for only five or seven minutes, then I'll be done. Ellen White tells us in the book, Last Day Events, page 219, paragraph four, sealing is settling in truth both spiritually and intellectually, so that we cannot be moved, you know? And so I'm so happy to meet people who are reformed to the latter, you know, health reform. I had a problem with health reform, dress reform and Sabbath reform in the general conference. But anytime I meet people like this, I feel I'm in the, in the right place and I feel I'm with the children of God. So I've come to, mm, to know that most of us have settled in truth, intellectually what is remaining we need to settle in truth spiritually are we together we need to settle in truth spiritually the book straight to christ page 47 paragraph two says that desire for goodness and holiness are as are, are right as far as they go but if we stop here they will avail nothing many will be lost while hoping and desiring to become Christians, they have not come to the point of yielding self to God. They have not now chosen to become Christians. So we need to choose to become Christians. We need to choose to yield our way, our will to God. Many times we decide to be holy, to reform, and to do so many things. They are good. But the question is, have we yielded our will to God? Have we? The reason why we are in this world today and Christ has not come, there are two reasons. I want to mention of one of them. The common quote in the book, COL, page 69, paragraph one. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of his character in his church. And then it says, when the character of Christ has been perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. The question is asked, are we reflected the character of Christ? Do we read our Bibles? You know, I was a Roman Catholic and I used to go to church. I hear first reading, second reading, and, you know, the sermon, you go back home. When I came to SBA, I noticed that people have read the Bible as a story book. And it made me to read and to memorize the Bible like a so people because I don't want anyone to deceive me. And so, brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, as I end, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, 
as you, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. We need perfection. For without holiness, no one will see the face of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13. Brothers and sisters, there are a lot of things to be done. When I look at the mission one and the mission team in Baringo, I just feel like crying. People are in, dark, in full darkness. And I look at myself, we are only less than five people. We need to preach the gospel to the entire Baringo County. And I'm like, God help us so that we may preach. And so as I end, Gospel Sounders Ministry once again. Welcome to Baringo. Bring the gospel. Someone like me wanted to become a priest. I didn't know that someone like Luther, who was in the in Catholic Church, will become a reformer. Until I became one of them who wanted to be a priest. And now I am one of the ministers of the One True God movement. With God, nothing is impossible. Let's press on, pray for one another, settle in truth intellectually and spiritually, and God indeed will help us, and we will hasten the coming of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Let's believe and pray. Our God and our Father, we are so thankful, God, for you've brought us out of darkness into full light. We are not that special, Lord, to be in this place and to believe in the one true God message. This is grace. This is indeed grace. It has taken your able hand to reach this point. Holy Father, take away our pride and prejudice. Help us to have humble hearts and the meekness of Christ, so that, Lord, as we preach the gospel, we will be able to be under the guidance of your Spirit. I pray, Lord, for this ministry. I know it's your purpose that this ministry is going to take the gospel to the entire world. I pray, Lord, for all your faithful ministers in this country and in the four corners of the earth. Help us, O oh God, for without you we can do nothing. I pray for each and individual member in this place, God. Many of us have settled in truth intellectually alone. What we are lacking is the settling in truth spiritually and that we may feel the sanctification of your word. Help us, O oh God. Holy Father, thank you so much for this camp meeting. It's my prayer that as we are about to come to the end of the camp meeting, may we leave this place not the way as we come, but Lord, changed, sanctified, and ready to do your work. Be with us, for this is my prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen.